wheat as the source of protein? Turns out the developing world gets most of their protein from wheat. Over 18 million people in the U.S. have a gluten sensitivity or intolerance. Wheat is a staple of diets all across the world. In fact, about 20% of the calories consumed worldwide actually come from wheat. The fact that we're losing arable land every single year, but we have more people to feed, uh, it's inevitable that we're, going, that we're going to have to use that type of seed that is going to uh, be, be uh, uh, in, for lack of a better term, created by science. We have certainly get the feeling that we're helping to feed the world. Wheat is in a lot of products that I think consumers are not aware of. It's just the functionality of wheat has multiple uses, uh, specifically the gluten in wheat. If I were to go to a grocery store and show you every product on the shelf that contains some wheat, I think consumers would be surprised. One of the targets that of gene editing that we pursue, we try to uh, produce wheat, uh, low gluten wheat. We are trying to reduce the amount of immunoreactive amino acids in gluten protein, and at the same time, we are trying to maintain the uh, elasticity and viscosity of dough that are very important for bread making. But a perfect loaf of bread for me is going to have an open crumb, it's going to have a nice crust, and it's going to, the dough, the, the dough itself is going to go through a very long fermentation process. And of course, clean ingredients. What we're trying to do is improve the quality of the wheat, make it function better in a loaf of bread, make it higher protein. We want a clean product. We want to be as natural as possible. Clean label to, for, for most of us is ingredients that we can recognize in our own pantry. Uh, uh, it's, it's simple ingredients, it's flour, salt, and yeast. The customer, they, they want something that is going to be uh, accepted by their bodies well, and, 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 um, and of course, uh, healthy. In 2017, the world finally sequenced the wheat genome, uh, the wheat genome being its collection of DNA. We described that prior to having that wheat genome map is similar to having a book with all the words in it, but none of the words are in order. And now that we have that sequence of that map complete, we know what order those words go in. And that's a significant difference. We know exactly where to look for traits that we want in the wheat plant. So combine that, that map, in conjunction with techniques like gene editing, uh, we're really going to be able to accelerate the pace of the projects we're working on, uh, but increase our understanding, our basic understanding of wheat and how it works. As wheat scientists, we are getting better and better understanding uh, how many, many genes in the wheat genome interact with each other to produce specific traits. As we learn about this process, we are actually also getting better at selecting targets uh, of gene editing. And as a scientist, by doing these changes, we are trying to fix deficiencies and improve genetic code. By using gene editing, we can improve the protein content, the nutritional value of the wheat itself. Probably in the future, we'll be able to modify almost any trait uh, using gene editing technology. Gene editing is extremely powerful technology and it can solve a lot of problems that we face in agriculture and healthcare.